Hello, this is Dr. Samuel Kisiodu, speaking in Hampton, Virginia, in the United States. I gave a part one of the importance of God's word. So let's give the part two of the importance of God's word. Number one, the word of God is for healing. In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says he sent his word and healed them all and delivered them from their destructions. So the word of God comes to heal us. Physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, even professionally, in our ministries, in all aspects of our lives. If something is sick, it means it's not whole. Healing means wholeness. So I pray, Lord, send forth your word to heal. When there's any form of sickness of any kind, Lord, send forth your word to heal me in this part of my body. Send forth your word to heal this situation. In Psalm 103, verse 3, the Bible says, He forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Iniquity is self-will, a slap on the face of God. So some, some sicknesses are connected with um, sin, iniquity. So if, if, let's say, you sin and open the door and an evil spirit came into your life and he brings sickness, then the word comes to rebuke the force of evil and to heal the sickness. And sometimes the enemy takes away the sickness you brought. So the word is for healing. Heal your mind and heal your soul and heal your spirit from worry, fear, anxiety, and all kinds of emotional sicknesses and illnesses of all kinds, of all sorts. The word is for healing, for wholeness. You see, I have testimonies of times when I was sick and got attacks of the enemy and just reading the Bible, concentrating for about an hour and the thing vanishes. It's amazing. If Job were here, we would say Job has, has boils down the road and it's this horrible infection, but it was an attack of the enemy. It was an attack of the enemy. So be very careful of how you open doors for the devil to attack you. Because it can, it can bring some sicknesses and diseases too. We have examples in the Bible. And Jesus had to deal with them. So get yourself healed. More scripture between a husband and a wife, uh, someone and another person courting, between children and parents, between you and the person, on a committee, in a ministry, on a board, in an executive group, or anywhere, the word of God will come and heal the differences. Not all of them. Some will have to talk about them. Some may take some time, but the word of God must be brought in as light to lead us as healing balm. Come and heal our minds and our hearts from the self. Making yourself big in the group and always feeling you're on top. When you talk, no one should talk back. You know everything. Know it all attitude. The word of God heals, breaks down. The more word we have in ministry and in marriage and in courtship and in the business place and other places, the more we'll get healed. But we know you say that, ah, oh, what about the workplace where the people don't even believe in God? I'm not saying you have to believe in God and if you don't work hard and use your brains and make use of talents and gifts, you're going to receive the thing by the Holy Spirit, you're going to drop it in your laps. That's not what I'm saying. But as a believer in Christ, God originally created things expecting his word to be in charge of everything. So if by God's grace things are fine somewhere without the word of God, as we have in, uh, is it Romans 2 verse 4? Romans 2, for the goodness of God is to lead us to repentance. So let's be very careful. Romans 2, 4 and 5. Number 2, the word of God is a counselor. David in Psalm 119 verse 24, your word... Your, the scriptures are my counselors. In all areas of my life, I get counseled by the word of God. So no matter who counsels you, let the word counsel you too. But don't say, well, I'm reading my Bible, I'm getting counsel. So I will not go for premarital counseling. I will not get help from anywhere. It's like people who want to control the other person. Hey, I don't want anything of mine to go out. Just to control the other person and to keep on cheating and fooling. Fooling, you know. That also is not good. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And Jesus is the chief counselor. Counseling is, is, has its roots in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9 verse 6. 
is the wonderful counselor. So he gives it through his word. Now in Psalm 32 verses 8 and 9, in Psalm 32 verses 8 and 9, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go, you in particular, the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. But don't be like the horse or the donkey, the mule, which must be controlled before it, <laughs> it toes the line it's supposed to, to, <laughs> to obey and walk in the path that is designated for, for the animal. Um, we are not horses. Forgot to put ropes in our mouths and pull before we obey simple instructions. I will instruct you like God the Father. I will teach you like the teacher Jesus Christ. And I will counsel you like the Holy Spirit, the counselor. So we see Father, Son, Holy Spirit all involved in leadership and in guidance in Psalm 32, verses 8 to 9. Let the word of God counsel you. Third point, the word of God is a cleansing agent. Usually clean means cleaning outside. Cleansing is cleaning inside, your soul and spirit. So keep the word in your heart because it's going to cleanse you. Bring it out of your mouth. Make it active. Speak it out. Whisper it. Pray it. Confessing the word is very important. It's often said what you confess you possess. In Psalm 119 verse 9, Psalm 119 verse 9, says a young man, how do you keep your way pure? By guarding it according to God's word. The word of God will help to control that hot blood and the zeal, the vim and the vigor you want to do and you want to use the energy and use them in the wrong places. Touch, drink, eat it, go for it. Must be controlled, must be controlled. So allow the word of God to go into you as a young person. Young man. Also mean the beginning of things. Okay. Then the verse 11 of Psalm 119. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. How do you hide it? Think it. Meditation is to your soul as digestion is to your body. As you think of it and think of it, the way you think of the insult and the incident, and it bothers you and makes you sad and angry, and you want to have a revenge, and you want to go and post something on Facebook or post it on WhatsApp, or post it in the email, or sing a song, you see, as vengeance, you know, that you are not a fool, you see, that you think he's talking because of you, so you, you have to revenge. <laughs> and sometimes the one doesn't mean you at all, but he's touching a sensitive nerve. It happens to all of us. You see, that the way it bothers you because you were thinking about it. Think also about the word of God. You see, and apply the word of God. Kill the evil feelings and thoughts and attitudes and things with scripture, scripture. If you don't do that, you will do a lot of good things, but any zero before God, because the spirit with which you are doing is not a good spirit. Spirit of competition, spirit of vengeance, spirit of venom, spirit of, hey, it is me too. When you see someone is excelling anywhere, hey, what about me? And you want to do something. Even we do that with singing in church. They don't know have a good voice. I can also play the guitar. I can also say it. They have to find something to also put it there for people to see. Oh, my brother, my sister. Hmm? Flesh, flesh, flesh. Self, self, self. Me and you, we catch ourselves doing that all the time. Call a spade a spade, not a big spoon, and deal with it. The fourth point, the word of God is like fire. The Bible says it's like fire in Jeremiah 23, 29, Jeremiah 23, 29, fire burns. It burns the chaff, the weeds, but also burns the enemy and burns inside you so it has it cuts on all fronts. The word of God makes you active, energizes you. It's the anointing. And the word of God is like a hammer, says the Bible in Jeremiah 23, 29. It breaks the hard heart. Is your husband's heart very hard? Your wife too, someone you live with, a family member, a leader, or somebody. Scripture. Pray that the Lord will make Scripture, find his own way to make Scripture go into the person. The Word of God is the hammer that breaks. Is there a hard situation? The Word of God breaks. And breaks it to pieces. That's what the Bible said. Lord, break it to pieces, which you can't even put together. For it to, 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 to be sure, to break that, that, that hard attack into pieces. 
A fifth point, Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30 verse 5. Every word of God proves true. He is assured to those who take refuge in him. Every word of God proves true. It's genuine. You can trust it. It's a shield to those who take refuge in him. Through the word. Run into it by speaking it. Praying it. The Lord's name is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. This morning I gave to some people on phone. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Light to reveal what is wrong. To put right. Light to reveal what is right to keep. Or what is mediocre to modify. Okay. And my salvation taking me out. Lord, you saved me out of this. You are my light. You showed me this and you will take me out. You showed me that I should marry this person. I should do this job. Take this position. I should enter into this ministry. I should move to that place to live there. I should buy this. You saved me out of every trouble that comes with it. Because you led me to it. Okay? Every word of God proves true. And I told him also in Psalm 27 verse 1, verse, two, verse 1 and 2, he says, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. I hide in you. In Psalm 19, verses 7 to 11, it talks about the word of God, its benefits, and talks about other names for the word of God. From verse 7, the law of the Lord, so scripture is called the law of the Lord, is perfect. Refreshing your soul. Do you want your soul refreshed, your mind, your will, your emotions? Refresh. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. Statutes. Refers to the word of God as statutes. You can trust them. Making wise the simple. It gives wisdom, guidance, what to do with knowledge. Then if I say, the precepts of the Lord. It's called the precepts of the Lord. They are right. Giving joy to the heart. Seat of emotions. You have joy. So the word of God gives joy. The commands of the Lord. Because the commands of the Lord are radiant. They are radiant. They give you light. They give light to the eyes. Physical eyes and spiritual eyes. And we can see and we are arguing and fighting in the relationship, at the church business meeting, on the board, on the phone, or whatever it is. Bring some light of God's word. Because the fear of the Lord, the word of God, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord is pure. It endures forever. You see, it will always be there. The decrees of the Lord, because the decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Righteousness is not just doing the right thing. Have the righteousness of Jesus, but do the right thing at the right time for the right reason equals righteousness. The righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. Okay? Scripture is called the righteousness. And it's called the decrees of the Lord. The decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, that much fine gold. And they are sweeter than honey and the honey from the honeycomb. Ooh, sweet. It refreshes your soul and your mind and all. By them your servant is warned. It's not only unbelievers who need warning. A servant is warned. You see, you are warned as you minister. As you marry your wife, train your children, as you help people, as you do your job, whatever you're doing, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. In keeping them, there is great reward. So there is a reward for obeying, keeping the word of God. Keeping the word of God. The next point. In Psalm 119 and verse 105, the word is lamp to my feet and light on my path. Lamp to my feet to know where I am. Light on my path to know where I'm going. The same lamp to your feet, the prayer you pray for your visa. Settle in that place. Bought that new house. Started dating and courting. Started the marriage. Became pregnant and had a baby. The lamp to your feet when you're on campus. When you're elected into office. When you started the business. When you started living with that person in your home, when you started the ministry, when you occupied that position you were given in church, elder, deacon, associate this, and the head of this, and executive member appointed, lamp to your feet. Now what is the light on your path? As they went along in the marriage, went along in the courtship, 
went along in training the children and being pregnant and having the babies living in that new house. When they arrived in that country, after six months and one year and two years, then the euro and the dollar and the pound and whatever currency is the order of the day. And they have excuses upon excuses. And the best they can offer is just some simple Sunday service. Doing nothing for God. Not counseling anybody, not helping anybody. People who used to be wonderful people in Bible study. For 10 years, 15 years, whatever years. You go to their home, you may not even know they are Christians. Their own house help, housemate. Their own security or watchman. Their own cousin, nephew, niece, in-law comes to the house. Afraid, scared, shy. They, they, can, they can bring out any scripture. Cutting edge is blunt. It's a, it's a crisis, you know. It's in so many of the marriages and so many of the courtships and so many churches. This bishop, this apostle, this overseer, this reverend, this evangelist, hmm, this elder, this deacon, this ministry leader, if you have been watching him or her over the, over the times, over the years, blunt things have happened, but who is there to help him or her and doesn't know? As I say, there's nothing more miserable than a man who has stopped following God as he's supposed to and doesn't know. Sometimes I tremble. Samson had this Holy Spirit from the mother's womb. The Spirit left him, he didn't know. What about you and I? Hmm. And we take things for granted. You see, go into the scriptures, take time, take the Bible and read. Well, we need to repent, we need to go back, get fresh word. Light on your path. You started very well. Look, I have been a Christian for 50 years. I've preached all the time. And I tell people, if I get backsliding for two years, three years to call me, I can preach nicely. If the whole of this year, I haven't read Bible, or just simple devotion, simple devotion, no Bible study, nothing. If you call me, I'll preach beautifully. I'll go on a mission strip. Nobody will know. Are we going on recycling old messages? Like that professor in, 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 on campus, and the paper, the old paper he used 10,000 years ago, he's still using the paper, the white paper is not even yellow. He doesn't do any research, doesn't do anything, something new for the students. And make them read chapters. You won't prepare. The best is on PowerPoint. Break, break, break. Sentences, sentences and phrases. Sentences and phrases. Doesn't break down anything. Doesn't explain anything. Getting his salary. You see? Lamp to your feet. And most of the testimonies are lamp to the feet. But what about the light on your path? We know what you used to do before. Now you're forcing for recognition. Because your light is not on your path. Lamp to your feet means to know where you are and light on your path to know where you are going. Also means the word of God is for today and it is for tomorrow. Psalm 119 verse 105. The woman said we used to hold our hands to pray before we, we part in the morning like you do with your wife but it is all ceased. Even in marriage things you used to do to make your wife happy in, in the bed and in the kitchen and places on phone. You were calling home during the day. Why have you stopped? Now someone married to ministry. Always board meetings. He's planting a church here. And he's there for one month, two months. And he will even call. And the wife is compelled to be quiet because eh, he's busy with God. Trying to tell people, establishing a church, to do what? To do what you're not doing to your partner, to your wife, to your home. You don't get time to call home. Keep company. Let your wife know what is going on to pray. And you're setting up a church to put people there and tell them to be like you. My brother. Hmm. Number seven. The word of God can be trusted forever. Psalm 119 verse 130. 119 130. Forever your word is settled in the heavens. It's written in the heavens. And nothing can change it. No matter what politicians try to do. No matter what economists and people try to do. No matter what lawyers Try to do scientists, doctors, the biologists, physicists, chemists, biochemists, and the architects. 
and you name it, the engineers, no matter what you try to do, if God doesn't come in to finally act, bless, direct, do, you are toiling for nothing. You are toiling for nothing. What are the great civilizations? Do you know what people have done before? Ho, 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 ho. It said the Bible says, any tree not planted by the Father will be uprooted. Let us pray about things. Let us do things according to God's word. See, what are we, what are we competing and running for? Titles. Feeling big. These days when they organize some programs, there are some people, unless you say, it's sitting on his laps. And you mention his name. If your name is not, or you give him a special place on the program, he will never show up. And there are people with positions and authority and power on positions to help do things. If it's not giving him or her a name, and number two, he's not getting a gain for his pleasure to satisfy himself, he will not want to participate with his heart. And the Lord Almighty, his video camera is very active up there. And when you want to stand before him, you have given account why you use your talents and gifts and abilities and positions like yours and not the way he wants you to use them. That's why we are suffering. Unless my name, I get a name from it. And I am I'm seen to be big and popular. Or I'm getting some money, some something, some, some benefit. I have an excuse. Sometimes I may not even mind you. And the spirit is spreading. And I'm telling the truth. I go around the world in places and I see it. And it is so sad. It is so sad. You see? And it's not easy. Do you know I was teaching in a school? I don't want to mention the school. <laughs> and students will come to me and said, Oh, teach us in biology. As a biology teacher. Some years ago. And I helped them go to the classroom and direct them, teach them. And I was enjoying doing that. But then the parents of that school said, you know what, the kids come to worry us. There was a boarding school. So we want them to remain at home, sorry, remain at school at the weekends more. So we'll have classes for them on Saturday mornings in particular. So we go uh, to eat in the morning and we have inspection and that. And then we, the whole school started holding extra classes up to 12 o'clock. They didn't know, but it was an agreement, a secret agreement between the teachers and the, the authorities and parents. The parents actually ask us to do that because they're not studying. So if someone really, really have to go home, he has to ask for special permission because, yeah, sometimes someone has to go home. And then uh, you have to choose between. And then so they went home after 12, gave them time up to 6 p.m. So it stopped a number of people from just going home, walking around. And so the parents contributed money to give to us. You know something? <laughs> Now, because we were being given something extra for extra classes. Now, when the students came to me and said, Oh, on Thursday evening, can you go with us and explain mitosis, meiosis? And can you go and explain how muscles work? And explain to how seeds germinate? And do this one and that one? And, and that, that. Can you tell the parts of a fish that does this and that? Uh, 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 that was a little problem. Why? Because they are not going to pay me. I am used to now doing extra classes for money. Aha. Uh -huh. And I had to check myself. You tell me it was easy standing there, knowing very well. I'm standing there talking to these 5, 10, 15 students who want explanation for this, but they are not going to pay me. I had to discipline myself. That's why your love shows as a Christian. And the word of God is what to break down these things. Scripture. Because something in you doesn't want to do it. Something in you wants to push the self forward. That is what the fruit of the Spirit begins with. Love, joy, peace, patience. You know that Galatians chapter 5, 22, 23. It starts with love, goes with joy and peace. It ends in self-control. Self-control is what you use to manage the gifts. So no matter the gifts you have, if you don't control self, and self-control was given to us as a gift by God, by the Holy Spirit. It is self-control that Eve didn't exercise and ate the fruit. Mm, mm, I wanted to eat it. If you don't use self-control for any gift, you may even decide to have a party because you have a baby. 
and you are so excited that your joy was not controlled, so self-control was absent, you finish and there's a debt. Or the way you did it, you ended up sinning against God. People came and fought and drank and did things. It can be anything. You see? You can have so much joy, you're going to have a wedding. You end up with debt. And you borrow money to have a wedding, thinking that you're going to get gifts. And having some plates and, and library books and things like that. And the dollars and the currency and the pound and the euros and things. And your CD or Naira and things. Didn't come and then there's trouble. Psalm 40, Isaiah 40, sorry, Isaiah 40, verse 8, the word of God endures forever. Say the word of God. It stands forever. The word of God stands forever. It is the real truth in John 17, 17. It's in John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. Memorize it. Thy word is truth. Lord, speak your word. Your word is truth. Heal me with your word. Your word is truth. Let your word do the conversion. For example, you know, the only way to change a woman, to fit you, that a helper fit for you in Genesis 2, 18, is not a ready-made product. Oh, the woman has come. Oh, fit me. <laughs> you have to share your, 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 who you are, your background and things, your dreams, and then the woman will catch your vision. You can't teach vision. You catch it. And so you, you have to take your time to let the one know the truth about you. You see, if he doesn't know you, his knowledge is what you use to relate to people. So the word is truth. The word is truth. You see, let the word work in you so you become a very truthful person. The real truth. So Jesus is full of grace and truth and, and, and light. Okay. The last one I want to mention here is uh, Hebrews 4, 12 to 13. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 4, verses 12 to 13. The word of God is living, first of all. It's living, which means it grows. I was amazed one time I took Psalm 23. The things I learned, I knew it even before I became a Christian as a little boy. But you read every time and something fresh. Things I've read, you go over one morning, I take the scripture. I said, wow, I take my pen and paper, writing. Do you have to think where you write what God teaches you? Please. It's living and it's powerful. Take a time and look at Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. It is powerful and it is sharp. It says it's able to go between the division of soul and spirit where nothing is able to distinguish. It's like a love and lust. It's like enthusiasm and boastfulness. You know, there's a sharp line, those gray areas. The word of God is such that it can reveal what is in your husband or wife or the one you're going to marry. If you had brought scripture a lot in the courtship, the word of God will reveal some things. The word of God will bring a number of things out. It is powerful, it is sharp, and it provides complete exposure. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. The word of God brings complete exposure. Exposure. More word. Will even make you know where you are wrong. Will expose things you need to put right, which your wife has spoken about for so long. Your husband has spoken about your parents, your associates, the people you are leading in ministry, the people you are leading in the community, which you have said on the FM stations, in the newspapers. And you can't just see because you are spiritually blind. The way to give light and expose and accept it and be better because it's in the end you go to heaven to stand before God for eternity. Why don't you seek to do what is right and get recognition in people's eyes and they have no heaven to take you to? If you run into problems, the same people will gossip about you and laugh at you. Man has nothing to give man. Anything anybody gives is from God, from school fees to children, to nothing is yours. Your body is even the temple of God's spirit. Let the word of God penetrate every area of your life, my brother, my sister. Do Bible study. Apart from the simple devotions. Get into the word. You see, we suffer because we don't use the word. The word is not active within the body of Christ. I've been on some church board in a church denomination I don't want to mention, one of the best in the world. Where elders meet, I was an elder. They don't even pray and start the meetings. Read one verse and start. 
So I introduced it. Can you imagine one time we met and I said, let's pray. They got angry every time I'm saying, let's pray, let's pray. We pray in the homes. I said, what? And some of you go out and praise as missionaries and you are telling me this? Is that what you take to those countries? Let us wake up. Let us wake up. The word, the word must be strong and active and properly used to glorify God in our lives and heal us and lead us and bless us. Lord, thank you so much for this study of your word. We ask that you put the good things into practice. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Dr. Samuel Kisiedu. Some say Reverend Dr. Samuel Kisiedu in Hampton, Virginia, the United States. Founder and President of Fruitful Ministries International Incorporated. An evangelistic and teaching Christian ministry with branches all over the place, especially in Ghana. Typically in Ghana, with headquarters in Accra. And we have it in Kumasi and Tamale and Cape Coast and Kopokwapim. And we have representatives in places in Kosombo and Dodua and places in Ghana. And representatives in London, in Toronto, New York, here in Hampton, Virginia, and Maryland. Okay. If you want to call me, call me on one seven five seven. 728-9330. The cell and WhatsApp is 1-917-741-0643. 1-917-741-0643. Email is k-i-s-s-e-a-d-o-o -S -S -E at msn.com. K-I-S-S-E-A-D-O-O -S -S -E at msn.com. And the website is www.fruitfulministriesint.com. Ministries is R-I-A-S. Fruitfulministriesint.com. I have books. Get them at Challenge Bookstores in Ghana. Uh, go to Amazon.com. You see one or two. Um, we are putting more there. And then... You call in Ghana, West Africa, call 020-812-6533 in Accra. 020-812-6533. Ghana code is 233. Say 233-20812-6533. In Kumasi, call 0275-353-802. Two seven five three five three eight zero two. So if you're calling from our side, it's two three three two seven five three five three eight zero two. They'll connect you to other places in the country. We have free seminars every second Saturday of the month from eleven to one o'clock. From eleven to one o'clock in the morning, eleven to one. Call these numbers. Call 020-812-6533. Now, call for free counseling for programs, um, prayer, okay? I don't have a special charge for counseling, okay? In case you say, yesterday I talked online to some group somewhere. I said, hey, how much do you charge? I said, no. See, we take a lot of friends for the ministry, but we don't, I don't charge, okay? The gospel must be given freely without a charge, okay? But it doesn't mean we don't receive support for the ministry, we do. Because we, we pay people, we help people, and we do all that. I have a broadcast on Joy 99.7 FM in Accra, Ghana. Joy 99.7 FM. 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. every Saturday morning. 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Joy 99.7 FM. It's hope for your family. Get it anywhere in the world with myjoyonline.com. Myjoyonline.com. And then go to live radio. Okay. And you can also get audio messages by calling Tigo 545. And you follow the prompts. There are other messages and things you can get. If you contact me, either by WhatsApp or by email, or you call me, I'll let you have access to them. 
please let's take the word of God serious in the times ahead. You'll be surprised the things that God is going to do in your life. Make time. Disobedience to the word is what drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. So a woman was given to a man to help the man to obey God. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. And most of the disagreements in homes and families, a lot of it is attributed to lack of scripture between the husband and the wife. And in courtship, how much of scripture is going into your courtship right now? Counselors, are you telling them to have Bible time in their courtship? How much of scripture are you emphasizing when you are counseling them? The words alone don't do anything. If it is something demonic there and you do all kinds of things and invite forces, some ancestral forces, all kinds of things, without the scriptures, the person knows the thing but can't do because something else is propelling and moving the one. You see this in the scriptures. Unless Jesus had stepped in, the person was bound. A spirit had to be dealt with. May God bless you, may God strengthen you, may God keep you. God bless you.